So now that it's hot in Texas, let's talk a little bit about heat illnesses. Heat illnesses are best thought of as fluid. It starts off with just feeling a little hot. It can escalate to swelling, uh, cramps, ultimately loss of consciousness. You'll hear terms like heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Well, heat stroke is just the end spectrum that is defined as a body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit associated with neurologic dysfunction, which basically means you basically have this high fever, essentially, and your mental status has been altered. So there are two forms. Exertional, so that's when like an athlete is out in the sun conditioning and passes out. And then there's the more classic non-exertional form, which commonly affects older people who may be on medications that limit their ability to articulate their discomfort or produce sweat or move to a cooler environment. And this um, same sentiment can affect young children, babies, right, that are left in cars or young people who um, are pre-verbal and they can't articulate that they are hot or that they are feeling overheated. Heat stroke actually carries a very high mortality, untreated, so cooling therapy is essential. Cooling therapy is done according to local practice, but typically involves immersion in cool water or ice baths. And this has been found to be effective, although it can be very uncomfortable, especially if the patient is alert and oriented and kind of knows what's going on. So what are some of the signs that may be exhibited by someone around you that's suffering from heat exhaustion or heat stroke? And how do you know what to do? So I like this infographic as it shows or attempts to show the delineation between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. You can see that Although it's on a continuum, we like to try to categorize things in medicine. So heat exhaustion is typically thought of as an elevated body temperature, perhaps, accompanied by a headache, fatigue, anxiety, maybe um, weakness, muscle cramps, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and the skin of the person tends to be moist, maybe pale, maybe even cool as they try to cool themselves off with vasodilation and sweating. When you get to heat stroke, things are a little bit more dire. Temperatures are 104, 105 degrees. Of course, they still have some of the same symptoms, headache, um, altered mental status, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. But remember, the cornerstone of heat stroke is that altered level of consciousness, this altered mental status, which defines heat stroke. Remember, this is typically more common in people who are not able to get to cool environments, maybe because they lack mobility or ability to realize that they need to get to a cooler environment. Perhaps there are medications that pro prohibit the body from having the ability to sweat or cool themselves off. Other physical findings may include increased heart rate. They can actually experience uh, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which is basically difficulty breathing and findings on chest x-ray to show that there's fluid in their lungs. Kind of, You kind of have to think of it as like basically the body is melting. It's like being cooked in an oven. And of course, your proteins are going to denature and things are going to go wrong. So it's going to be very important to recognize this. Somebody that's in the, the, the hot sun or a hot environment, they are altered. They're complaining of nausea, vomiting. Maybe they are um, having cramping and maybe they're sweating. Maybe they're not. You need to recognize this to get them to a cool environment. And if it is in the category of heat stroke, get them to an emergency department so they can be rapidly cooled safely and assessed for secondary damages due to the heat exposure. So as the temperatures rise and you are out in this hot sun having beautiful vacations, remember to keep this in mind. Remember to be vigilant and check on your children, especially your young children. Check on the elderly and monitor yourself and the people around you so that if you start to see signs of heat exhaustion, remember that it's a continuum and can quickly lead to a heat stroke, which carries a high mortality. So you want to take action and remove that person from the heated environment and implement measures to cool down their body temperature.